The Kraft Foods Company presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you each week by the Kraft Foods Company. Kraft, you know, are the makers of the wonderful new Kraft pasteurized processed cheese in slices. Those perfect slices of extra mellow-tasting processed cheese that are formed, then wrapped and sealed for you right in the spick-and-span Kraft plant. You'll find them in your grocer's dairy case. Eight fine slices in every neat package. And those packages really are neat, and they hold eight delicious slices. Look for them when you shop tomorrow. Those neat square packages marked... Craft Deluxe Slices. Now, let's see what's doing with the great Gildersleeve. The day's work is done, and the water commissioner is at the wheel of the family car, heading homeward. He seems to be in fine spirits. Say, Christmas decorations in the windows already. Yeah, I'm glad to see it. Yeah, I love the Christmas spirit. Well, there's old Moneybags Bullard walking home. Look at him, marching along with his nose in the air. I hope he catches in the tree. <laughs> you, what a snub that Bullard is. Yeah, what the heck. I'll offer him a ride. It's only a couple of blocks. I can stand him that long. Hello, Bullard. Oh, good evening, Gildersleeve. Yeah, I'm on my way home. Can I give you a lift? Old neighbor? Old friend? Thank you. I'll ride with you. <laughs> well, good. Where's your Cadillac, Bullard? Break down, did it? No. No, I'm having a new set of tires put on. New tires? What was wrong with the old ones? One of the valves was leaking. <laughs> oh. This is a nice car you have. Well, thank you. Has a self-starter, has it? <laughs> hey, I've been thinking of trading it in. Naturally. It, it, yeah, how's everything at your house, Mr. Bullock? Everybody fine? Yes, yes. My little niece Brenda is quite excited. Tomorrow night, her school is holding its annual junior cotillion. A cotillion? That's a dance. Oh. Brenda's a pupil of Mrs. Murphy's seminary. Uh, seminary, yeah. Uh. Private school. Oh. It seems Brenda must invite a boy to be her escort at the cotillion. A boy of good family, of course. Stuffed shirt. Mrs. Murphy's seminary caters only to the best people. Super snob. From what I hear, Brenda is planning to invite your little nephew, Leroy. You well, Leroy, what? My Leroy? She is? Well. <laughs> of course, you know how boys are. Leroy probably won't go. You won't go? Leroy? Oh, yes, he will. He comes from a good family. <laughs> Bullard, have a cigar. <laughs> Going to be invited to Mrs. Murphy's cotillion. You're right, George. Old Bullard is true blue. Only the children of the leading families are being invited. And Leroy's in my family. Gildersleeve, you may not be rolling in dough, but you're getting into the upper crust. Oh. Hello, Anki. Good evening, Marjorie. I was watching through the window and I noticed you drove Mr. Bullard home. Yep, I picked him up down the street. We had a fine talk. I misjudged Bullard all along, my tree. Oh? Absolutely. Took me all this time to find out that he thinks very highly of me. In fact, he considers us to be one of the best families in town. Did he say that? You well, not in so many words. But it was the same thing. By the way, where's Leroy? Well, he's upstairs. Has little Brenda been over? Not that I know of. What's going on, Unky? You wait. Big surprise. Leroy! Yeah? Put on a clean shirt, wash your face, and comb your hair. 
Ilfer. I said get cleaned up. What for? Oh, my goodness. There she is at the door. I'll get it. What's going on? You'll see, my boy. Hello, Bertie. Oh, good evening, Miss Brenda. Is Leroy here? Yes, and he's right here. Won't you step in? Thank you. Well, hello, Brenda. Good evening, Mr. Gilderson and Marjorie. Hello, Brenda. Hello, Leroy. Hi. Leroy, <laughs> don't you know how to answer a lady when she speaks to you? I said hi. Yeah. Excuse me, I'm going out and help Bertie. Don't you want to come, Monkey? No, thanks. I'll stay here with the children. <laughs> well, nice to see you, Brenda. Yes, indeed. Thank you, Mr. Gildersleeve. What's on your mind? Oop. Leroy, you don't ask a lady what's on her mind. Well, I didn't expect an answer. I was just being sociable. <laughs> I came over to ask you something, Leroy. Yeah? What? Leroy, you don't say, yeah, uh, what? Oh, uh, why don't you talk to her? <laughs> I was only reminding you of your manners, my boy. Brenda's a lady, and you're a gentleman. Okay. I was wondering... Would you like to take me to the cotillion tomorrow night? For a walk? Yeah, a dance, Leroy. You've heard of the cotillion. It's sort of a dance. It's at Mrs. Murphy's seminary. It'll be awfully nice. I'd, I'd like to have you go with me, Leroy. If you're not busy. You'd love to go, Brenda. I would. You what time, Brenda? Be at my house at 7 o'clock. My Uncle Rumson will drive us over. Yeah. Well, that's fine. And thank you very much for asking him, Brenda. Leroy will be there at 7 o'clock. See you tomorrow, then. Good night. Leroy. Good night. Good night, Mr. Gildersleeve. Good night, Brenda. Oh, what did you want to get me into that for? Holy cow. Well, Leroy, this is a very important affair. The children of all the best families are going to be there. Then what am I going for? <laughs> Leroy, we are one of the best families. This proves it. Mr. Buller would never have let Brenda invite you if he didn't think we belonged in the blue book. Blue book, schmoo book. The now, my boy. Besides, you like Brenda. She's a fine little girl. She's okay. But gee, Unc, I can't dance. You can, too. It'll be a lot of fun. You wait. They'll have fruit punch and cookies. All you can eat. Yeah? You'll enjoy it. You can't dance while you're eating, can you? <laughs> Certainly not. How long will it last? About three hours, from eight until eleven. Why? I wonder if I can keep eating that long. <laughs> well, don't you worry about it, my boy. It'll be a fine evening. Now, you run upstairs and get cleaned up for dinner. Okay. <laughs> what a boy. He really wants to go. He just had to be prodded a little. What happened, Donkey? Yeah, it sounded like you were having a big discussion in here, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, you, know, you home, Bronco? As I came in the driveway, I saw Mr. Bullard's little niece, Brenda, going down the walk. Hi, <laughs> cute youngster. <laughs> you bet. She and Leroy have a date for tomorrow night. Leroy has a date? Yep. A very nice dancing party at Mrs. Murphy's seminary. Quite fashionable. Children of all the leading families. Well, you never can tell, Mr. Gildersleeve. Leroy's date with Brenda may be the beginning of something. <laughs> Who was that? Well, that's how I found Bronco. He took me to a dance, and now he's mine. Oh, Mars. <laughs> but you were both grown up. Leroy's just a boy. Well, you know what they say about childhood sweethearts, Unky? Yes, sir. Great oaks from little acorns grow. <laughs> well, why, George, Leroy could do a lot worse than little Brenda. I know what you are doing, Unky. You're making a match. He's a regular Cupid, isn't he, Marge? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> yes. Cupid and his little dark. <laughs> Excuse me, children. Where are you going, Unky? Before Bertie puts dinner on, this Cupid is going to dart down to the drugstore and get some cigars. Hello, Peavy. Well, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> what can I do for you this evening? You can give me a couple of El Lobos, Pete. Very okay, well. There you are. Yeah, I'd better take a little box of chocolates, too, Petey, for Leroy. He's going to his first dance tomorrow night. Little Leroy? My, my. He is very exclusive. Children of Summerfield's most prominent family. 
This is the one Leroy's going to? <laughs> you bet. And you'll never guess who it was who invited him. Who? Mr. Bullard's little niece, Brenda. Aren't you surprised, Petey? Mm, well, yes. Well, you don't show it. Oh, I blinked my eyes. <laughs> oh, you have another customer, Petey, so I'll be. Well, hello, Bullard. Good evening, Gildersleeve. Hello, Peavy. Good evening, Mr. Boyd. Yeah, you're just telling Peavy. Your niece and my nephew are having their first date tomorrow night. Yes, yes, they're going to Mrs. Murphy's cotillion. I thought they were going to a dance. <laughs> Peavy, ordinary people call it dancing. We call it cotillioning. <laughs> you don't say. Yes, little Brenda is all a flutter over the occasion. Yes, old little Leroy. He can hardly wait. Yeah. Uh, by the way... Can you give me a small bottle of perfume, Peavy? Perfume? Hmm. Uh, what fragrance would you like, Mr. Bullard? I have Scarlet Midnight, Dizzy Dew. Uh, uh, <laughs> no, no, Peavy. This is for Brenda. Your perfume for little Brenda. Sweet. Well, here are some perfumes for children. How about little Bo Peep? <laughs> <laughs> Brenda's a little beyond the Bo Peep age. Don't you have something halfway between little Bo Peep and Dizzy Dew? <laughs> How about Lily of the Valley? Good. Sure. Leroy will like that. He loves the outdoors. Well, Judge Hooker. Good evening, gentlemen. Oh, Judge. Good evening, Judge. My, we have quite a gathering here. Are they buying something, Peavy, or did they just come in to smell the licorice? <laughs> smell the licorice. You know, this is a real occasion, Judge. Tomorrow night, Mr. Bullard's niece, Brenda, and little Leroy are having their first date. No. Yes, sir. They're going to a cotillion. Yeah, that's a dance. Leroy and Brenda, those two dear children. Life's most cherished moment. It brings tears to my eyes. I can't find my handkerchief. I can tell you one for a dime. <laughs> no, thanks, Peter. I, I found mine. How vividly this recalls fond memories of my childhood. When I first escorted a little flaxen-haired miss to a taffy pool. A taffy pool? <laughs> I bet you were stuck on her. <laughs> Eva, how fine it is, Rumson, that you and Gilday have at last buried the hatchet. Finally joined hands in friendship. Yes, sir. Bygones are bygones. Eh, Bullard? Yes, yes, I suppose they are. Yeah, it's probably a good thing. The way it looks now, you two fellows are liable to be related. Well, it could happen. Tomorrow night might be the beginning of a romance. Leading someday to wedding day. Oh, now, Judge. <laughs> Judge, what an idea. You <laughs> and and Bronco were talking about the same thing at home. Of course, it's silly. Well, childhood sweethearts, you know, sometimes grow up and get married. In the spring, a young man's fancy lightly turns to love. Judge, please. <laughs> Nobody is getting married. Nobody is even thinking about anybody getting married. Yeah, of course not. Brenda has a number of years ahead of her. So is Leroy. Plenty of time to find a good wife. A girl has to look around. So does a boy. He can't just marry any old girl that comes along. Well, I wouldn't say that Brenda was any old girl. Oh, no. In fact, she wouldn't marry just any old boy. Well, Leroy isn't just any old boy. You aren't thinking he might marry Brenda. Marry Brenda? Leroy? Certainly not. That's ridiculous. What's ridiculous about it? You will nothing. You know, simply that I'm not trying to make a match, I... I mean, I wouldn't want Leroy... Oh, to... you wouldn't want Leroy to marry my niece? No. I mean, yes. My family isn't good enough for you. Yeah, I didn't say that. Gentlemen, please. Gildersleeve, I wouldn't let my niece marry into your family if you own the state of Texas. Nope. <laughs> Is that so? Yes. All right. And you can tell Leroy he can just forget about going out with Brenda tomorrow night. Yeah, and you can tell Brenda she can forget about going out with Leroy. What do you think of that? I've said it before and I'll say it again. Gildersleeve, you're a nincompoop. <laughs> oh, go to a cotillion. That's it, Dan. <laughs> Peavy, this is all your fault. My fault? You started this whole thing. Peavy, you're an old troublemaker. 
No, no, I wouldn't say that. The Great Gildersleeve will be back in just a moment. You're missing something if you haven't discovered Kraft pasteurized processed cheese in slices. Mmm, I should say. You're missing the most delicious, most mellow processed cheese you've ever tasted in the most perfect, even slices you've ever laid eyes on. Kraft Deluxe Slices are wonderfully different because they're made differently. Instead of being cut from a loaf like other sliced cheese, Kraft Slices are formed by an amazing new Kraft invention that captures extra cheese goodness, a through-and-through -through mellow flavor in every perfect slice. Then, just as soon as these slices of fine processed cheese are made, Kraft wraps and seals them, eight to every neat package, so they'll stay perfect and protected all the way from Kraft to you. That means you won't have to put up with any more slivers or dried edges or broken pieces, because Kraft slices are really perfect, and they're so easy to separate. Just open a package and peel them apart. You'll find it even easier than peeling a banana. Tomorrow when you shop, get several packages of this wonderful processed cheese so you'll have plenty on hand for those quick snacks and sandwiches you need so often. Once you discover them, you'll never be without convenient, delicious Kraft Deluxe Slices. get back to the great Gildersleeve. Our water commissioner's dream of making Summerfield Social Register went up in smoke last night. Leroy's date with Bullard's little niece Brenda was called off very suddenly by the uncles involved. And this morning at least one person is quite pleased with the way it came out. Little Leroy. Leroy, what you hollering about? Good. Now I have to go to that darn old dance tonight. Too bad. What's too bad about it? I think it's keen. Oh, I was thinking of little Brenda. Leroy, you better start being nicer to the women folks. If you don't look out, you ain't gonna go up and get mad like Mr. Bronco and Miss Marjorie. Oh, I'm nice to him, but holy cow, they're always hanging around. What a boy. Who's at the back door? Why, that's Miss Brenda. Morning, Miss Brenda. Morning, Bertie. Hello, Leroy. Hi. Could, could I speak to you a minute? Outside? I don't feel like going outside. <laughs> Tell it to me inside. Leroy, you get on out there. That poor little girl. Okay. Go on now. Poor little girl. Okay. What do you want to talk about? Leroy, my uncle says I can't go with you tonight. Yeah. My uncle says I can't go with you either. Leroy, what do we do? Nothing. But, but I want to go with you. I'll get somebody else. I don't want to go with somebody else. I want to go with you. Well, well Roy, we, we don't have to go to the Cotillion. We could go someplace else. My uncle just said I couldn't go to the Cotillion with you. Well, Roy, don't be mean. I'm not being mean. Oh. You don't cry. <laughs> do, do, do you want to hold my hand? Okay. Well, Roy... Yeah? I like you. Do you like me? <laughs> You're all right. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I have to go now. I'll be waiting for you by the tree in front of our house at 7. Well, I don't know if I'll be there. Goodbye. I don't know if I'll be there. Women make life so complicated. <laughs> Hello, Leroy. Oh, what's your problem, little brother-in-law? Is Uncle Moore home yet? Not yet. What's the matter, Leroy? I got worries. <laughs> what is it, Leroy? Girls? Yeah. Mr. Bullard said Brenda shouldn't go to the cotillion with me. Uncle Moore said that I shouldn't go with Brenda. But Brenda wants me to take her someplace anyway. You think I ought to... Poor Leroy. Uncle and Mr. Bullard ought to be ashamed of themselves. You're right, Marge. You know what I'd do, Leroy? What? 
I'd stand up for my rights. Go over there and take Brenda. Go someplace if you want to. Faint heart, ne'er one, fair maiden. I got a one already. What am I going to do with her? <laughs> do you like little Brenda Leroy? <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Then you do just as Bronco said. And if Uncle Mort or Mr. Bullard say anything... Well, we'll take care of it. Leave it to us, Leroy. Thanks. You're keen. Well, if I'm going with a girl, I may as well face it. If face what? I gotta take a bath. Hello, Bertie. My, you home late this evening, Miss Gilsey. Well, I had a lot of water bills to get out. Family had dinner? Yes, sir. They've eaten and gone. Eaten and gone? Leroy, too? Yes, sir. <laughs> Where'd he go? I don't know, but he took a bath and put on clean clothes before he went. He's going someplace, that boy. He is? Yes, sir. He was clean and handsome and bright in the eyes. Two to one, he's headed to Brenda. You but Bertie. He was clean and handsome and bright in the eyes. Two to one, he's headed to Brenda. You're all right, Bertie. Mr. Gilfrey, you know where it's two to one Lee Roberts headed? Yes, That's Bertie. That's right. It's two to one, he's headed for Brenda. <laughs> <laughs> That boy went over to Bullard. Gildersleeve! Gildersleeve! Oop. There's Bullard. What's he bellowing about? Gildersleeve! All right, don't knock the door down. I'm coming. Gildersleeve! Where's that nephew of yours? Bullard, don't you roar at me. Where's that niece of yours? He's with your nephew. Where's he? He's with your niece. You started this whole thing, Bullard. You and that darn cotillion. Gildersleeve! I... Here. Here's a note pinned to your front door. What's this? Huh? Yes, he says, uh, dear Uncle Mort, Brenda and I have gone to Union Station. Don't be sore, love Leroy. Union Station? Union Station? They're leaving us, running away together. On the train? Little Leroy. My little Brenda. We drove them away, Gildersleeve. No, Bullard, it's not all your fault. I'm to blame, too. We're fools, Gildersleeve. Blind fools. You're all right. Well, let's not stand here. You're getting tears all over the run. <laughs> Let's do something. Yes, yes, do something. We've, we've got to do something. Come on, Gildersleeve. In my car. We'll go to the Union Station. Maybe we can head them off before the train leaves. Come on, Gildersleeve. I'm running. <laughs> Every inch of the depot and the freight yards. Not a sign of them. I'm afraid we're too late, Gildersleeve. They must have taken the 7.30 train for Kansas City. My little Brenda. Little Leroy. We've turned them against us, Gildersleeve. Just a pair of fools, that's what we are. And now we're paying the price. Stop blubbering. I can't stand it. <laughs> Let's go home to my cold, empty house and call the FBI. FBI? G-men? Chasing little Leroy? Or they'll just take them off the train. You poor frightened little kids. Driven from their home. No place to go. <laughs> A little Brenda. <laughs> Bullard, stop blubbering. <laughs> Surprise you. Yeah, we're, we're not angry with you. We're happy. 
happier than you will ever know. You, know, you have no idea how happy we are. We thought you were gone, both of you. Oh, Brenda, don't ever do that to your uncle again. So what? Well, it was that note you pinned to our door, Leroy. What about it, huh? Well, you said you were going to Union Station. Yeah, we did. That's the title of the movie we saw. <laughs> What time is it, Bullard? Uh, it's it's uh, 9 o'clock. Why, right, George, you can see it again. We'll all see it. If we hurry, we can get there in time for the second show. Come on, everybody, let's uh, go. What a character. But I like him. <laughs> Great Gildersleeve will be right back. Now, if pleasing the whole family is your biggest problem when it comes to buying cheese, just listen to this. Those wonderful new Kraft Deluxe Slices come in five delicious varieties. That's right. Those fine slices of pasteurized processed cheese that Kraft makes and wraps eight to the package come in five different kinds. Mellow Kraft American, Kraft American with pimentos added, Kraft Brick with that deep, rich flavor, Nut Sweet, Kraft Swiss, and Sharp Old English brand. So every member of the family can have his favorite processed cheese for swell-tasting snacks and sandwiches that are really quick, really easy to fix. Tomorrow, look for them in your grocer's dairy case. The five kinds of delicious Kraft processed cheese in slices. <laughs> found it, Leroy's got the phone. And I wanted to call Catherine. Can I speak to Brenda, please? Hello, Brenda? Hi. I don't know if I can walk to school with you tomorrow. I don't know. Can't you find somebody else? Listen to that boy. The way he treats little Brenda. Yeah, I don't think I can tomorrow. Oh, all right. Sure. You're welcome. You're welcome. Goodbye. You're right, George. Maybe the boy has something there. Hello, Catherine? I don't know if I can make it to your house for dinner tomorrow night. Can't you find somebody else? <laughs> you can. Oh, Catherine, wait, please. Leroy. <laughs> Walter Tetley, Mary Lee Robb, Lillian Randolph, Dick Trenna, Barbara Whiting, Gail Gordon, Earl Ross, and Dick Legrand. This is John Heaston saying good night for the Kraft Food Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> magic in mustard. Yes, when you want to put new taste excitement in almost anything, just add a little mustard and you'll add a lot of tang. Hidden flavors pop right out. Every bite tastes better, particularly if the mustard you use is Kraft prepared mustard. There are two kinds of Kraft mustard, you know. Kraft salad mustard, delicately spiced for those who prefer mustard mild, and Kraft mustard with snappy horseradish added. Get both kinds, for when you add a little mustard, you add a lot of tang. Kraft prepared mustard. For a half hour of spine-tingling excitement, hear the Falcon each Sunday over this station. Consult your newspaper for time of broadcast and listen next Sunday as the Falcon solves The Case of the Harried Husband. <laughs> Here comes that unconventional gesture.